Welcome back to Callahan's Garage, and today we are finally getting some more Beetle content, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Callahan's Garage. My name's Callahan and today we are doing beetle floor pans. I know a bunch of you have been super anxious for, for some more beetle content and today's the day. Um, I've been super busy doing housework and running all over the country buying new cars and stuff being irresponsible but today we are back on David's Beetle and we are going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on beetle floor pans. So let's get into it. So first things first, we're gonna get this thing jacked up in the air absolutely as high as I can get it on my jack stands just to make it a little easier to work on. At some point down the road, I will build a dolly to put a beetle floor pan on. I've had one in the past at shops I've worked at and they're super convenient, but today's not that day. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna struggle bust through with this thing. Okay, so we're, before we start taking our pan halves out, we need to do a little bit of disassembly. So the main thing is we need to get the pedal cluster off of the tunnel. We need to get the long brake line out. We just need to get a couple things out of the way so that we can cut our pan halves out. So pedal cluster, two big 17 millimeter bolts, take loose your brake push rod and that's gonna come right out easy. The steel brake line that runs the length of the tunnel, so from the master cylinder back to the splitter where it goes to the rear brakes, we need to get that that long brake line out of the way because that's where we're going to be cutting and welding and grinding and everything so that brake line will get damaged if it's in the way uh, on this car it's in pretty sorry shape so i'm just going to cut it out and we'll put a new one in later if yours is good and you want to try to save it you can take it loose on both ends and kind of finagle it and bend it and twist it out of there but you do want to be careful you know that is a steel brake line it'll bend and kink up and you know be useless in in no time flat so just take your time if you're trying to save that and you can get it out in one piece. If not, like me, I'm just gonna take a pair of side cutters and I'm gonna cut it at the front, I'm gonna cut it at the back and that'll pinch off that line and you know keep me from losing a lot of brake fluid and I'll just rip it out of the way. So we'll get this stuff out of the way and we can start cutting our pan halves out. So we've got our pedal cluster out, but there's one more thing you don't wanna miss. You have this little pedal stop bracket. So this is what catches your pedals and keeps them from flipping all the way forward. You wanna make sure that you take this off and don't lose this. You're definitely gonna need that. And then we're gonna pull our battery cables out. Our battery cables run through this piece and we're actually gonna to have to replace these brackets on this pan half. So we'll pull these battery cables out. And then on this pan half, so this side of the pan half is original to the car still. Like this is all German steel right here. So we still have our original heat tube right here that ran over to our little heat flap underneath the back seat. So we're gonna, we're gonna save this tube. So we just need to cut this loose and then this thing will pull off out of the way and we can you know move our cable out of the way and we can save that and reuse it on the new pan halves. This side where we have our pan half that's already been worked on before, that tube is missing. So we're gonna have to come up with something for this side. I'll just buy a piece of brake line or something. We'll remake, remake a piece of tube to match this side. Okay, so now we're ready to start removing our old pan halves. So the way these pan halves are attached to the tunnel is our tunnel has like an L-shaped flange on the bottom of it. And then our pan halves just kind of lap over that and they're spot welded down through the pan halves. So basically we just have a flange all the way around this pan half that we need to get the floor pan taken off of. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my Sawzall or cut off wheel or whatever you choose. And I'm just gonna come in here and hack most of this out of the way and just leave myself you know about two an inch or two of material all the way around here and what that's going to allow me to do is just get most of this out of the way that way i can get in here you know up close to that flange i can clean it up i can see those spot wells and i'll be able to remove that you know a lot more cleanly with without having to bend over this and you know just be a big headache so we're going to hack both of these out of the way and then we'll take a better look at that flange and start getting it cleaned up OK, 
Okay, so you can see we've got most of our pan half cut loose here. The last thing that's holding up is this one little spot on the corner, and this is the first cut shortcut that a lot of people will take. So you could see me, I was kind of wrenching around on this thing, trying to get it to pop loose. And a lot of times you can do that. You can just kind of move the pan half around and this will just break loose. Uh, but in this case, I can't get it to come loose. So what the problem is, is on the front half of our torsion housing right here. So, you know, we've got our cast torsion housing right here that the pan half sits in front of. And on the bottom of this, there's a little J shaped loop, loop bracket that welds onto the bottom of our outrigger here on the back half of our pan half. So a lot of times people will get frustrated. They can't get that loose. It's hard to get up under there and they'll just cut that little bracket off. You don't want to do that because that's the only outer support that this outrigger has. So if we cut that off, then our outrigger here is just hanging on the tension of the floor pan. So we want to save that so that we have that little bit of support on this outrigger once we put it back together. So I'm just going to cut around this and then I can come back and clean it up to the way I, the way I need it to be later on. So now that we have most of our pan half cut out of the way, we can get in here, we can take a better look at this flange area where our new floor pans are gonna attach to. So if we look at this, you know, it's just covered in crud. We've got old tar paper sound deadening over here. So if I just take me a little scraper tool, you know, I can come in and I can clean a lot of this up and try to access those spot welds. So there's a couple of different methods we can use here to get all of this off. But what we want to do is we want to get this old floor pan section off of here so that we can get down to that bare flange to put our new floor pans onto. A lot of people will just cut this really short. You know, they'll leave that half inch or so of the, the original flange and then they'll just put their new floor pans on top of that. If we do that, the risk we run is we still have, you know, corrosion and stuff that's happening underneath our original floor pan half. So we want to make sure that we get all of the original pan half out. That way we can put corrosion protection on that flange before we put our new pan half down on top of it. So if we take a look at the easiest way to get this off, all I'm doing is using a chisel and a hammer and I'm just coming down through here and chiseling as much of this flange as I can off. This is going to be your quickest, easiest way to get this flange off of here. You know, nine times out of ten, you're not going to be able to see where all those spot welds are. They're going to be rusty and covered in crud and it's going to be nearly impossible to come through here and just drill out all of these spot welds. Not to mention it's gonna take forever. But if we get us a decent, you know, chisel, they make spot weld chisels specifically for this. I'm just using a regular old chisel. Um, and we can just come down through here and chisel away most of this pan half. And then what we'll come do, what we'll do is we'll come back in here and we'll just clean this up with a grinder, get it nice and clean. That way we can put some corrosion protection on there before we put our new pan half on top of here. So if we take a little bit closer look at this, you can see, you know, with that chisel, we're able to get almost all of that pan half off of there. And then right here, I've come back and I've chiseled it just a little bit more. And what you can do, if you can take your chisel and get kind of in between the spot weld sections there, you know, you can really get almost all of it off. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep doing this and then all we'll be left with is just these little remnants of the spot weld material. And like I said, you know, that'll grind off really easy and we'll have a nice clean OEM surface to weld to. Okay, so we've got this pan half completely removed. We've got all of our mounting surfaces cleaned up. 
So back here, you can see what I was talking about earlier, where we've got this just this little bracket that's going to support the outrigger for our pan. A lot of times you may not have to replace the outriggers, but these are in pretty bad shape. So we're doing the outriggers as well as the pan halves. So we've got all this cleaned up where, where our outrigger is going to weld on. And then this entire flange, we've come down through here, we've cleaned all this up. It's nice and smooth, it's nice and clean. It's going to be a good substrate for our new pan half to sit on. We also have these tabs. There's like three or four of these down the length of the tunnel. These are what hold your hard brake line in place. So a lot of times these will be broken off. So just be careful you don't break these off. If you do break them, they're, they're easy enough to you know make a new one real quick. But we've got this all cleaned up all the way around. So I'm gonna go eat some lunch and then we'll come out and we'll rip the other side off. All right, so we've got the first side completely removed, cleaned up, ready to put our new pan half in. We're gonna start tearing down the other side. Now this side is a lot more indicative of, you know, what you would typically see on, you know, doing a floor pan job. The other side was nice and easy. It was the original pan half, you know, it had some rust in it, it had never been worked on before. So we had a nice, you know, relatively easy time removing all those clean spot welds and everything. This side we have, it. it's hard to really tell what's happened up here. So the front half of it has been completely replaced with a new pan half. And then we have like a homemade patch here. And then whether or not this is the same portion of this, I don't know, but it's just like not installed really well. We've got a bunch of goop of some sort all up in here. So, you know, we're not gonna have those clean factory spot welds to cut through. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, when you have a situation like this, this will be a little bit more of a chore to get apart and get cleaned up really well. But we're going to do the same basic process. We're going to cut most of it out of the way, and then we're just going to start digging into it and seeing how easily we can get that flange cleaned up. most of this side cut out of the way and honestly it's a little worse than I anticipated um, so it looks like we had a full pan half that was installed on this side of the car at some point and it was actually installed from the bottom side so like instead of the, the new pan half sitting on top of that L flange like we talked about on the other side they just stuck it up to the bottom and it looks like they torch welded it in um, so we've got a ton of old crummy torch weld looks like up here that's going to take a while to get cleaned up. And then back here, it looks like we had two more patch pieces that were put on top of that replacement pan half at some point. So really just a big mess on this side of the pan. Um, so let's take a look at some of the stuff that's gone in here. So starting at the back, they had a new outrigger in here that wasn't even welded in. Like it was just sitting, it was only welded to the pan half. And then right here, you can see exactly what I was talking about on the other side. This has just been lopped off completely. So we're gonna have to fix that before we put the new pan half in. And then we've got just a big old pile of goop right here, just some kind of blue silicone that was sealing up that outrigger where it wasn't welded in. And then you can see we've got an old patch panel piece here stuck in from the top side, some more goop another piece stuck in from the top side and then up here in the front we've got all of this big globbed up old weld so i don't know if this this looks like it was torch welded you know because a bunch of our our tar paper here is all melted and stuff so i'm betting that's what they did is just stuck this up from the bottom side and then torch welded it up here on the top so good bit of cleanup work to do on this side so we're going to get it get it knocked out all right, well, we're making progress getting this side apart. I got the entire bottom layer chiseled off. I was able to use the air hammer and chisel and just kind of rip that off, made quick work of it. Um, an air hammer with a chisel is a great tool to use for this. You could even, you know, use it to get up, you know, that like we did on the other side, instead of using a chip hammer and a chisel, you can use an air hammer to do that. You just have to be really careful. It's really easy to get carried away with one of those and just punch, you know, right through the side of your tunnel. So if you do use an air hammer, you know, just, just be patient, take your time with it, don't get carried away or you'll just end up doing more damage than it's worth. Um, so now we've got another layer of floor pan on the top side that we have to get off of here. 
And unfortunately, it looks like the entire thing is just covered up with old, dirty, nasty weld. Um, so, I got my trusty die grinder. I'm just gonna start removing material from the edge here to try to get down to that flange. And then hopefully we can start chiseling and picking away at it and get all this out of here. So, this is the point where, you know, a job like this gets very frustrating and it's, it's very tempting to just take a shortcut, throw the new pan down on top of this and, you know, and goop it up with some seam sealer and send it down the road. But, you know, you're going to get a much better repair just taking your time, being patient and getting all this old crud out of here so we have a really nice clean substrate to put our floor pan down onto. It's going to last, it's going to be a much better quality repair that's going to last, you know, the test of time. So. I'm going to keep after it. Alright, so we're going to take a look at what I'm talking about here. What exactly we've got going on. So basically, all along the top edge of our flange here, we just have an old crummy torch weld where that new pan was put on from the bottom and then they just welded that seam, that entire seam from the top side. So basically what I'm having to do is just grind as much of that weld down as I can. So if I grind it down until I can get to the layers here you know once i get to that flange i can see my different layers of material here and then i can just go ahead and you know like we did on the other side and start chiseling that away and i've done that a little bit here already so this is just going to take a little while i'm just going to keep grinding this edge all the way down um you could cut through this with a cutoff wheel but i mean the number of the cutoff wheels and stuff that you'll go through trying to cut through this crummy old weld it's just as easy and quick to just grind it away so that's what we're going to do absolute chore and a half but we are finished we've got this thing stripped down ready to put our new floor pan halves in tomorrow so i'm going to spray some weld primer on these flanges real quick so it's got plenty of time to dry and everything overnight and then tomorrow we'll come out here and we'll start throwing our new pan halves in all right folks so we're back day two on our floor pan job so we've got everything stripped down ready to start installing our new pan halves so let's talk a little bit about you know all of our different options for our actual you know new pan half pieces um, so the pan halves we got these are from wolfsburg west they come with you know brand new full length pan halves the seat tracks are already spot welded on they also come with our new outriggers and new jack points all right so you know the when you buy your floor pans from wolfsburg west they come pretty much with everything you need um, some of the floor pan options out there do not come with the seat tracks um, with the kit or welded on so you know keep that in mind when you're looking at some of the some of the options some of them come with new outriggers some of them do not some of them come with the new outriggers already welded to the floor pan which can be good and bad depending on you know how they're installed so a couple things we want to think about when we're looking at our new pan half options the biggest concern for me is always, you know, the quality of the stampings and the metal. So, you know, with from Wolfsburg West, we get, you know, nice, heavy, heavy 18 gauge floor pans. Like they're the correct thickness from as OEM pans. Um, some of the other options, you know, they're like really flimsy 20 gauge and they just, they flex a lot. They move around a lot. They just don't feel as substantial as these do. Um, the classic fab pans, again, they're the thicker metal. They, they fit and finish really well. Um, some of the options that are available in the European market, I can't really speak to, but as far as, you know, stateside, most of the budget minded floor pans are coming, you know, they are the black clocker home pans and they're great, you know, if you're on a, a budget aspect. Um, but it, when, you know, when we're talking about a restoration quality build, you know, where we want really clean fit and finish, you know, 
the the Wolfsburg West, the Classic Fab, you know, stuff like that, they're going to be a better option. You know, they, they are a much better quality product. Now, if you're doing, you know, a patina build, a rat rod, something like that, and you just want to slap some new pans in as cheap as you can, cool. You know, those black floor pans are, floor pans are a totally viable option. However, the next thing to keep in mind is how are the pan halves going to fit into the, the tunnel? So a lot of the cheaper options, you know, you're really going to have to do a lot of work fitting and trimming up this inside edge to get it to fit into the tunnel correctly. Um, so basically, you know, the overall width of the pan will be too wide. And in order to get our outer channel out here in the correct position, we'll have to trim down this inner spot to get it to move in. So that's another thing you want to keep in mind. You know, when you're going and installing your new floor pans, we need to make sure that we have some dimensions, you know, here so that we can confirm everything is in the right position. Now, with these Wolfsburg West floor pans, I have never had an issue with these fitting. I've been installing these floor pans for years and, you know, dozens and dozens of cars. I have never had to do any substantial work to get these in. They pretty much drop straight in, ready to go out of the box. Um, so let's, I've already got one in place over here. Let's take a look at how it fits. So as you can see, I've got this one just kind of thrown in place over here. And there's two main areas we want to keep in mind when we're looking at how this floor, how this pan half fits. The first area is going to be along this front edge up here. So if we look at this one, you know, we're pretty close right along in here. So, you know, our outer edge wants to line up with this and we're just barely off right there. So if we look up in here, then we can see the corner is just, you know, bottoming it out in the corner between our Napoleon hat and our tunnel here. And that's causing us just a little bit of an excessive gap right here. So all we're going to have to do is just kind of knock the corner off of this and that'll be able to suck right up in there. And then if we look at the back right here, same thing, we're fitting pretty good back here and I've already stuck my outrigger piece up here. It lands right where we want it to be. And then the last thing we want to consider is, you know, where this outer edge is falling. So with our outrigger piece in here, this outer edge lines right up with the outside of that outrigger. So it's going to fit nice and neat where we want it to. So the last thing we need to do before we start fitting our new floor pans, like I mentioned before, this side has been cut off previously. So we just need to make a little tab to weld on right here so that our new outrigger will be able to come down and sit upon that. So I'm going to knock that out and then we can start fitting up our new pan halves. So a lot of times when we're doing weird little repairs like this, you know, we don't really have a lot to go on. So it's hard to know, you know, what this piece needs to look like. So fortunately, in most cases, your car is going to be symmetrical. So, you know, if we just go to the other side, we can look at the other side and it's going to give us a rough idea of, you know, what this needs to look like. So all I did, I got my handy dandy pizza box and I made me a nice little template off of the other side. And since, you know, this is just a mirror image of that side, I can come over here, fit that up the same way. And now I've got, you know, a perfect little template that I can trim out and make me a new piece to fit on here. So I'm going to clean all this up nice and neat, make me a new piece, and then we'll weld it on there. All right, so there we have it. Nice, clean little repair like it never even happened. And now we have a nice, sturdy place for our outrigger to sit on. We've got plenty of support out here for that floor pan and that outrigger. Okay, so we're ready to start actually fitting our floor pan up to the tunnel before we start to weld it in. So couple things to remember, you know, like I said, these Wolfsburg West pan, these Wolfsburg West pan has fit really well straight out of the box. You know, we don't have to do a lot here, but every single one of these cars is going to be a little bit different. So for example, on our Napoleon hat piece up here, you know, we have a seam weld all the way across the top of this tunnel. And right here in the corner, that weld is just built up a little too much. So it's kind of interfering with the sheet metal where it fits nice and tight into this corner. So we just need to trim a little bit of that corner off so that we get a really nice fit all the way across the front of our pan half here. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my marker. I'm just gonna mark out a little spot and then I'll clean that up with a grinder and we should be fitting much better into this corner.
So see there, with just that little bit of a tweak, we're getting a much better fit all around our corner right here and all across the front edge of here. So one thing to keep in mind, you know, when we're talking about fitting this up, we don't only want it to fit, you know, up to the tunnel well, and we want our channel out here to be in the correct location, but we also want the sheet metal of our pan half to sit right nice and tight down on top of that flange. So in order for us to get a good weld joint, you know, on all of these plug welds, those pieces are gonna have to fit really nice and tight together. And if our fit is off anywhere, you know, it's gonna leave us a gap in between there. So when we install these pan halves, we're gonna have to do just MIG plug welds all the way around here. Now, if you happen to have, you know, a very long reach spot welder and you can duplicate all the OEM spot welds, cool. We don't, so we're just gonna do some plug welds. So in order to get a successful plug weld, like I said, we want those pieces to fit really nice and tight together so that we get good fusion down into that flange. Also, the tighter these fit, you know, the more corrosion protection there's gonna be there, the less opportunities there's gonna be for moisture and stuff to get in between these pieces and concentrate and rust them out in the future. So the fit of all of this is just as important as anything else. Okay, so now that we have our front edge fitting really well, we're gonna move and start fitting the back edge up. So I'm gonna get my big trusty clamp here and I'm gonna lock down this front in place so that it doesn't move around while we're fitting up the back. Also keep in mind, you know, if you don't have a big pair of vice grips like this, you know, you can run a couple of self-tapping screws or, you know, some Clico fasteners, anything down in there to hold it in place. We just want to keep this from moving while we're fitting up the back half of this. So now we can grab our new outrigger and we'll start fitting up this new outrigger up to the pan and make sure all of this is where we want it to be. Okay, so when we're looking at the rear section of our floor pan here, we're when we're fitting this up, the main thing we're concerned about is, you know, does our outrigger fit correctly? And then does our floor pan fit up to the outrigger correctly? So if we kind of weasel this uh, outrigger into place here, we can look at this and we see if we set this in here, currently our outer edge is really nice. That fits up really well together. Our inner edge looks okay, so the inside of the outrigger here is, is actually touching. We've got a little bit of a gap here where we'll just have to hammer this flange, you know, nice down and tight before we weld this because this outrigger here gets a seam weld all the way around. So this will all get hammered down nice and tight anyway. So then once this is in place, you know, does our floor pan fit up to here correctly? And it looks like it's going to. Everything looks like it's fitting pretty good. Um, we do look like we have a little bit of a wide gap over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all this stuff clamped in place. I'm going to get the other side set up in place, and then we're going to come through here and verify all of our measurements. So like I was saying before, you know, we want to, we want to verify that our bolt holes and everything out here are the correct width, that this channel and everything is the correct width from the tunnel and then our total width overall so that all of this lines up where it bolts into the bottom of the car. You know, if all, if any of this is off, we're gonna get into having to, you know, hog out bolt holes, and then our body washers aren't gonna fit correctly. So we wanna make sure that all of this is as correct as it can be before we start sticking this stuff together. All right, so that pretty much locks this outrigger in where it needs to be. And the main areas you're looking at on this outrigger are right up here at the top of it where it kind of ties in to where our body is gonna sit. So we have this nice arc on the back of the tunnel here where the rear body comes down and sits onto it. So then you just wanna make sure that these two top lines of our outrigger are tying in you know, really close to where those two lines come in. So if you just kind of look at this area, it makes a lot of sense when you're looking at it and you can see pretty much where this needs to go. 
Also, we've got a little bit of our old weld right here where we can see you know, where that old weld ended. And it comes right to the corner. So we know that this is basically where it needs to be. And then if we look down through here, we want this gap between our torsion housing and this outrigger to be nice and even. That way we know that you know these pieces are square with each other. So we can just tweak this around just a little bit. That looks really good right there. And then we see our floor pan is still fitting pretty good. We've got a nice tight gap back here. We've got a little bit of a gap right here, but you know we'll work this down and we'll clamp this together as we go along. Um, so this side looks like it's gonna be pretty good. It looks like it's where it needs to be. Okay, so we've got everything clamped in place now. Now what I wanna do is just verify that everything is where it needs to be. So I'm gonna pull a couple of dimensions off of this and just make sure that everything is right where we want it to be before we start welding stuff together. Cause you know, the last thing we wanna do is to just go to welding all of this together and then something's, you know, even a quarter of an inch out, you know, that can cause us a big headache, you know, when we go to put the body back on. So um, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna verify the width on the front up here, you know, from the tunnel out and then our total width and then I'm gonna do the same thing from some point on the back. Now, I know a lot of, you know, this can sound very overwhelming and very intimidating. Um, and the main reason we're concerned with this is because those rear outriggers got replaced. Um, if you don't have to take the rear outriggers off and you can just set your new floor pans into place, you know, then you, you have a good reference point on the back and on the front to begin with. And that makes this much easier, you know, much more worry free. Um, Cause basically, you know, we have our points on the end, as long as our floor pan fits down in there and matches up front and rear, it's pretty much good to go. But since those outriggers did come off, you know, we just want to make a hundred percent sure that this is where it needs to be before we stick it down. So, um, I've got a chart that I've used several times that has, you know, all of the dimensions of our floor pans laid out on it. And uh, it's on the Samba, you, like, you can find it very easily, but I'll put the link to it in the description so that you guys can use it if you need it. Okay, so everything is in place, our measurements all checked out, everything looks like it's gonna fall right where we want it on our new pan halves. But we do have one issue that I haven't really run into with these pan halves from Wolfsburg West before. I know I've been singing the praises of these, but you know we do have one little issue that's, that's gonna be a pretty hefty workaround. Um, so along the edge, the, the inside edge of our pan half here between the tunnel, we've got a very large gap over here. Um, now it's, it's like a quarter of an inch, but you know, normally that pan half would butt, you know, right up against the tunnel. We would have almost no gap there. So what that means is, you know, when we have that flange on the tunnel, our pan half isn't overlapping the, the flange quite far enough. Um, so my concern is that we're not gonna have enough meat there to make our holes to do our plug welds in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get up underneath of this and mark the, the flange, where the flange sits on the pan half. Then I can flip the pan half over and see just how much space we have there. And then we can kind of figure out what we're gonna, how we're gonna go from there. Okay, so I'm gonna try to explain this as best I can. So basically, like if we think of this as being the flange on our tunnel here. This flange here is only about five eighths inches wide. Okay, so currently our floor pan is sitting about right here. So then we have this quarter inch gap between the edge of the floor pan and the inside wall of the tunnel there. So we're only getting, you know, a, qu a quarter inch or so of overlap between our two pieces, which is plenty of material, you know, plenty of purchase for our floor pan to sit on there securely. But when we're talking about making a plug weld, you know, that's 3 16 to a quarter of an inch wide, that gives us very little wiggle room to, you know, make that weld without ending up, you know, without that weld falling over the edge of our floor pan flange here. So basically what would happen is, you know, as we went around the floor pan and made our holes for the plug welds, they would kind of fall right on the edge of that flange or maybe even come over it a little bit. And what we don't want is our weld to be kind of halfway over the edge of the, the pan, the, the flange here. We don't want our weld to be halfway onto this, this flange. So I think what we're gonna do is just come in here 
and just stitch weld this along the inside edge rather than doing those plug welds and it'll still be just as secure of a method of, of attaching the floor pans you know there won't be anything wrong with it and you know we're going to come in here and fill this whole corner up with seam sealer down the road anyway so you know it won't be any less of a repair it's just not the way that i typically like to do this so, you know, we've come up with a little bit of a plan for a workaround for our, our little issue here. So normally the next step would be to come around and prep our pan halves to do all of the plug welds. So in order to do that, you know, we would come in here and we would drill a hole or punch a hole with a pneumatic punch, you know, every inch to inch and a half or so. Um, and we're talking about, you know, not a very large hole. That's one of the big mistakes people make when they're doing this is they make too large of a hole to weld up. So you really only need, you know, about three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch. So like I said, you know, not a very large hole. Um, on these thicker, on the thicker pan halves like these, I like to do a quarter of an inch. That way we get, you know, plenty of fusion through the thicker material. If you're using the thinner pan halves, you may want to do a little bit smaller because a lot of times those thinner pan halves, you know, you're putting more heat down into the flange. So with that heat, you know, those thinner pan, that thinner material on top is more susceptible to kind of blow out. So that smaller hole, you know, helps to mitigate that a little bit. Um, so like I said, you know, normally we would come in here, we would punch all our holes all the way around. We would clean all that up and get ready to plug weld this down. But instead of doing that, basically what I'm gonna, in lieu of the plug welds, I'm just gonna do a stitch weld on the edge of the pan half down into the tunnel. Um, and again, I'm gonna do those like at every every inch to inch and a half or so. So the same way that I would the plug weld, that I would normally do the plug weld, like this will work just as well. We'll come back in here, we'll clean them up, we'll seam seal over them. So you won't really know the difference either way. Um, but you know, typically that's just not the way I do it. Um, so like I said, you know, normally this pan half would fit all the way up tight against that tunnel and our only way to do it would be to make those plug welds, but you know, this, this will work. So this issue we've been talking about is only going to apply to the tunnel side of our pan halves. So along the front and the rear edge of the pan halves, we're still going to plug weld this down. So we're going to come through here, bust a couple of holes in here, uh, prep that out. I'm going to come through down the length of the pan halves. I'm going to mark where I'm going to make those stitch welds. We'll clean, clean those up ready to weld. And then we also have a couple of solid welds that we need to do. So up and over this section here is going to get a solid weld. And then like we said earlier, around the top of our outrigger here, that's going to get welded solid. So we need to mark everywhere where this is going to get welded. We'll clean that up, make sure that it's ready. We'll bust all our holes in this, make sure that's ready. And then we'll, uh, we'll be ready to start gluing this thing down. So we're ready to actually start putting pieces together now. So I'm going to start back here with my outrigger. I've got this thing fully prepped all the way around. Nice clean surfaces for us to weld to. So we, we know where this thing needs to go already. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to hold it back here in place. I'm going to tack it in. Once I get it tacked in, I'm going to throw my floor pan up here. Make sure nothing's moved around. Nothing crazy's happened. Then I'm going to fully weld this outrigger in. Once the outrigger is fully welded in, We'll finish prepping the area for the floor pan half and then we'll stick it in. Okay, so our outrigger is fully welded in now and we've got everything clamped here in place. You can see back here, I've got all of my holes 
punched and prepped, ready for our plug welds. Same thing up in the front, got our few holes across the top here. Everywhere where we need to make a solid weld, I've got it nice and cleaned up, ready to go. So typically at this point, what I like to do is start somewhere you know, towards the center of the pan and then kind of work your way out in both directions. Um, a lot of times what'll happen is you know, if you start in the front and kind of work your way around or vice versa, you know, start in the back and come this way, a lot of times what tends to happen is you know as you're pressing this down you know because this isn't sitting you know totally flush down against our flange right now so as you press down on this and start welding around a lot of times what will happen is you'll get you know kind of a wave in the in the floor pan and you know if we've got if we're coming from this way and coming from this way and we end up with a wave right here it's very difficult to you know kind of press that wave down and get it worked out flat again Whereas if we kind of start in the middle and work our way out, you know, we, we do have a little room for the material to move and stuff in the corners. So most of the time we can, you know, kind of get those wavy spots or those high spots, you know, kind of worked out as we're welding it in. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna start right in the middle and I'm gonna kind of work my way gradually in both directions and we'll get this all stuck down. Take a look at these plug welds up here kind of as i'm doing you can see i've already done two of them here and now what i'm doing as i do each one of these plug welds i'm going to keep moving this clamp you know out with me as i go that way you know kind of like what i was talking about earlier we want to make sure that this floor pan gets sucked down as tight as it can be against that flange underneath that way we don't have any air gap between the two pieces when we're when we're making those plug welds so if we have you know any kind of gap in between these it's going to want to blow that top piece out so in order to make this weld you know as clean and easy as possible having those piece those two pieces fit up really tight against each other is going to make this really easy Okay, so we're at the point now where doing a job like this completely by yourself can get a little frustrating. Um, so basically what's happening is we've got the front half of the floor pan completely welded in and the back half here needs to suck down, you know, like an eighth of an inch to get down tight against that flange really well. Um, and you know, I don't have a clamp that's big enough to reach all the way around this floor pan and clamp it down. So we have to have some kind of means of, of pushing down on this, you know, to hold it down as we weld it. So, you know, if you have somebody to help you, you know, it's really beneficial because they can, you know, grab a big punch or a hammer or a piece of wood or whatever, and they can, you know, push down on this and hold it down while you can stick your face and both your hands right down in there and see what you're doing and get it welded. However, if you're like me, you know, by yourself today, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to push down on this with one hand and then I'll reach in here and weld it with the other hand. And it'll be a little frustrating and a little cumbersome, but we'll get it done.
right, so we're all wrapped up with this side. It's all fully welded in, nice and solid. And you can see kind of on this back half here, you can see where I was kind of having to work it down and, you know, hammer it and work it and massage it into place as I was working my way around it. And that's exactly what you have to do. You know, sometimes it just takes a little persuading to get it down into place before you weld it. The last, but remember, you know, the last thing you want to do is weld it up with that gap in there because all that's going to do is allow moisture and crud and everything to get in there and then it's just going to rust out again that much quicker. So just take your time, be patient, work it all in, get it fitting nice and tight together. So let's jump over to the other side and we'll do this all over again. Alright, so we've got our second pan half fully welded in now, so we are rapidly approaching finishing up this job. Kind of the last thing that you would normally, you know, weld in in a job like this would be our jack points. So, some of the, some different floor pans will come with the jack points already welded onto them, which is totally fine. Um, one of the other reasons I like these Wolfsburg West pan halves is because they don't come with the jack points already welded on. 
So, you know, depending on the type of build that you're doing, the type of restoration, you know, sometimes I won't even put these on. Um, you know, like if it's a modified car that's going to have lowered suspension and everything, I really like to just leave these off because they do hang, you know, really low underneath the back end of the car. They get hung up on speed bumps and everything. Also, like, I just don't like to encourage, you know, lifting the car from this point ever. So, you know, given the option, you know, I'll leave these off. And on this particular car, this car is lowered a little bit, so we're not gonna put the jack points back on here. And it just gives us a little bit cleaner look, you know, along the underside of that running board on the back half of the quarter panel. So, you know, if you are gonna put these on, you know, they basically just sit right there, get a couple of little welds around them. It's very straightforward, um, you know, just, Take a couple of measurements, make sure you get them in the same spot on both sides so it looks nice. But, you know, like I said, do or don't put these on. It totally depends on, you know, where you're going with the car. So, like I said, we're pretty much wrapped up with our floor pan install here. But there's one more, there's one last thing that I'm going to do and that I want to talk about real quick. And that's coming back and cleaning all of these welds up. So, you know, normally, like we talked about before, we would have plug welds all the way around the perimeter of this pan. So, you know, we've got just a little dollop of weld here. And it's totally fine. If you get, you know, nice clean welds, it's totally fine to leave those. Um, but normally what I like to do is, you know, just get my grinder and come back and smooth the top of those welds out really nice. So that we get a really nice, clean, consistent finish. You can't see the welds. It's a very OEM look. So, you know, that's kind of up to you how you want to proceed here. But if you don't grind the welds off, the one thing that you do absolutely want to do is get some protection all around this, this lap joint here. So, you know, when we have, we have that flange and then we have our floor pan that sits on top of it. So anytime we have a lap joint like that, we want to protect those seams from getting any moisture or road grime or anything, you know, into that joint down the road. So on the top side and the bottom side, we're gonna seam seal up that joint. And, we, and you wanna use a really nice quality product there. You know, gets you some 3M seam sealer. Um, Worth makes a really good product. You know, there's several very good seam sealing options out there. Um, you know, so at the very least, we wanna get in here, we wanna brush this joint out really well. We wanna clean it really well. Ideally, we would spray, you know, some epoxy primer or something over that joint, seam seal it up really nice so we get a really nice, clean OEM finished look. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna clean up all of my little welds in here. And then at some point down the road, we'll get some primer and some seed and sealer on this. quick little tip on you know when you're grinding down welds and stuff like that you can see I used a couple different tools here I've just got my right angle die grind grinder my little finger belt sander and then my regular old angle grinder um, any of these work fine you know whatever you need to get down into those corners and you know get to different spots and stuff the biggest thing is you know just don't get carried away when you're using these tools you know it's very easy especially on floor pans and stuff you know we're not talking about exterior body metal and stuff you know it's very easy to get carried away with a grinder and grind too much and what you don't want to do is you know a lot of people's tendency is to just grind and grind and grind until they see that weld completely disappear and you know that's totally fine if you do it correctly you know if you have a good weld you have good everything is nice and flat you keep your grinder nice and flat that's totally fine but most people's tendency is to grind too much and it's very easy to you know remove most of the meat of that weld and you know especially if we're talking about some of those thinner gauge floor pans you know it's very easy to grind most of the weld away grind halfway through the floor pan and you know then you have very little meat left there in that joint you know holding those two pieces together so just be careful you know be mindful of what you're doing pay attention and don't grind too much All right, folks, well, that's gonna wrap it up for our floor pan install on David's Beetle. Uh, I tried to be as thorough as I could, you know, so hopefully you learned something. If you do have any questions about any of this, you know, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. Uh, so, 
We'll keep picking away at David's Beetle. If, um, we've done a lot of work to it already, so if you haven't seen those videos, please go check them out. And uh, we've got a bunch more work coming up on this thing in the future. We've still got heater channels to do and some other odds and ends stuff. So I'm going to try to do, you know, as thorough videos like I did here on those jobs as well. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're here for the Beetle stuff, please subscribe and stick around. And uh, we've got a lot more of this coming up. So see you guys next time.